My name is Gabriel Greenberg Pines. I'm a PhD student at the University of British Columbia, and my talk today is titled Energy Intake and Web Building Spiders is Determined by Spider Size, Not Web Geometry. As organisms grow, their body parts and processes scale at different rates. Many fundamental biological and physiological processes scale allometrically with body size. Metabolic rate per unit mass declines somewhere between the negative one-third and negative one-quarter power of body size depending on a variety of potential factors, as illustrated in the graph on the right. In addition to bodies, many spiders also have webs with a diversity of geometrical arrangements. And spider webs are critical because they capture the energy needed to meet the metabolic demands of body size. As, early, as illustrated earlier, body size more or less determines metabolism, and metabolic rate per unit mass declines at approximately the negative one-third to negative one-quarter power as a function of mass. And metabolism should set the baseline for the rate of energy uptake from the external environment, which should then meet those metabolic demands of body size. Thus, we should expect that the energy intake rate per unit mass should decline with a similar slope as metabolic rate per unit mass as a function of mass. And for spiders, we know that their prey capture webs are critical in extracting energy from the external environment. And one of the most important aspects of these webs is the prey capture surface area. However, it's unclear how the prey capture surface area per unit mass should relate to mass. We also know that the prey capture surface area should influence several important prey capture metrics, including prey capture rate per unit mass and average prey size per unit mass. But again, it's unclear how these should relate to mass. Something we do know about spider webs is that they scale at rates determined by their geometry. For two-dimensional webs, prey capture surface area should be proportional to a linear dimension squared. In addition, web volume should also be proportional to a linear dimension squared. Thus, we should expect that prey capture surface area per unit of web volume should be constant as a function of web volume. For three-dimensional webs, prey capture surface area should also be proportional to a linear dimension squared, while web volume should be proportional to a linear dimension cubed. This means that prey capture surface area per unit of web volume should decline to approximately the negative one-third power as a function of web volume. Given what we know about spiders and their webs, we wanted to ask the question of how web geometry and body size affect the scaling relationships of energy intake among web building spiders. We hypothesized that body size should determine the overall amounts of energy that spiders need, but that web geometry should determine the scaling relationships that facilitate the acquisition of that energy. We performed an observational study at Pacific Spirit Regional Park in Vancouver, British Columbia from June through September 2020. We surveyed approximately 560 web building spiders across five families and 12 genera. Our metrics included prey capture rates, prey size, and taxonomic order, including dimensions of webs, spider size, and web weights. We then ran a set of linear mixed effects models with fixed effects including spider mass, web geometry, and the interaction between them, and genus as a random factor to control for phylogeny. First, I'll discuss the results on the geometrical scaling of spider webs. We found that prey capture surface area to volume ratios decline as three-dimensional webs grow, but remain constant in two-dimensional webs. As illustrated in the graph on the right, you'll see volume on the x-axis and prey capture surface area per unit volume on the y-axis. You'll see that or in orbs, prey capture surface area per unit volume is constant as a function of volume, but in both sheet and tangles and tangles, it declines to approximately the negative one-third power as a function of volume. This aligns well with the predictions based on the geometry of two-dimensional and three-dimensional objects, and means that as web volume is proportional to web weight, and prey capture rate is proportional to prey capture surface area, that in three-dimensional webs, as volume and web cost increase, a spider may capture less prey per unit web cost, potentially making a more costly web less effective at obtaining energy. In addition, we found that sheet and tangle webs maintain a constant prey capture surface area per unit mass as a function of spider mass, as illustrated in the graph at center, with mass on the x-axis and prey capture surface area per unit mass on the y-axis. You'll see that orbs, not limited by volume, are presumably growing their webs to a size that meets their metabolic requirements. Thus, we consider this the standard for the relationship. On the other hand, sheet and tangles in the center facet seem to be compensating above what would be potentially needed given metabolic scaling, but tangles on the right are apparently doing worse, declining with a slope of approximately negative 0.86. The fact that the slope is steeper than that predicted by metabolic scaling in both orbs and tangles could be that larger webs capture larger inse insects, perhaps compensating for declining prey capture rates 
per unit mass. Both sheet and tangle and orb building spiders do indeed capture larger prey as web volume increases. As illustrated in the graph at center, with web volume on the x-axis and average prey size on the y-axis, you'll see that both orbs and sheet and tangle building spiders capture larger prey as web volume increases, while average prey size actually declines as web volume increases for tangle building spiders, thus making it unclear how tangle building spiders may compensate for three-dimensional scaling challenges. Next, let's discuss the results for web geometry and energy intake. First, we found that prey capture rate per unit mass declines with a steeper slope than captures surface area per unit mass in sheet and tangle webs. In the graph on the right, you'll see mass on the x-axis and prey capture rate per unit mass on the y-axis. If you compare the green regression line for prey capture rate per unit mass to the green regression line for prey capture surface area per unit mass on the left for sheet and tangle webs, you notice that the slope for prey capture rate per unit mass is substantially steeper than that for prey capture surface area per unit mass. This indicates that, that sheet and tangle webs are substantially less efficient at capturing prey than the other two web types. In addition, we found that average prey size per unit mass is higher in sheet and tangle webs than orbs. In the graph at center, you'll see mass on the x-axis and average prey size per unit mass on the y-axis. This indicates that perhaps sheet and tangle building spiders are able to to compensate for the lack in prey capture efficiency by capturing larger prey. Lastly, we found that despite the differential effects of web geometry on both prey capture and web geometry metrics, that energy intake per unit mass is determined by spider size and not web geometry. In the graph at the right, you'll see mass on the x-axis and energy intake per unit mass on the y-axis. Presumably, the negative slope of energy intake per unit mass reflects the lower metabolic rate per unit mass of larger spiders, as illustrated in the graph on the left. However, it remains unclear why the slope of energy intake per unit mass is, is significantly steeper than that of metabolic rate per unit mass. In conclusion, we show that three-dimensional webs do indeed face scaling challenges, and that sheet and tangles in particular may compensate by maintaining a constant prey capture surface area per unit mass in capturing larger prey. However, sheet and tangles may be less efficient prey capture devices, especially compared with orbs, which seem to be very efficient maintaining similar slopes across both web and prey capture metrics. In the future, we're interested in how tangle building spiders compensate for three-dimensional scaling challenges, and again, why the slope of, of energy intake per unit mass is steeper than that predicted for metabolic rate per unit mass. I'd like to acknowledge that this project took place on the unceded ancestral lands of the Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh, and Squamish nations. I'd like to thank Dr. Rob Bennett at the Royal BC Museum for specimen IDs and the Aviles Lab for their help and support. We'd like to also acknowledge NSERC for funding.